Hello everyone, this video will go through the story of Yakuza 4. In 2010, Sean Akiyama, the owner of money lending company Sky Finance, goes on a collection run at the behest of his beleaguered assistant and a business partner, Hana. He visits the office of Kanemura Enterprise, a subsidiary of Dojo Clan Shibata family. Since he lent money to his patriarch, Hiroshi Kanemura. While waiting there, Akiyama learns that some goons from the Ue no Seiwa clan, the dojo clan's rival, are causing trouble at a club owned by Kanemura. If Kanemura's boys intervene, it could escalate the already tense relations between the dojo and the Ueno. Since Akiyama's good friend and Kanemura's right-hand man, Arai, was assigned the task of handling the problem, Akiyama decided to help out as his intervention as a civilian wouldn't complicate the situation. Then he goes to the club and picks a fight with the Ueno men there, Ihara and Mishima. Akiyama beats them both before Arai arrives. Ihara draws a gun and Arai tries to defuse the situation, but ends up getting shot before Ueno's men flee. The shot turns out to only be a grazing wound, so Arai heads out to follow his attackers. Akiyama returns to Sky Finance office. As he's entering the building, he hears a gunshot in the alley, where he finds Arai standing over a body of Ihara, whom he's just shot dead. Arai flees without explanation, right before the police arrive, including a strange young detective. Since Akiyama was the only person on scene, he's taken into custody by the police officers, who mistake him for the murderer. Akiyama is released from police custody after Hana testifies that he was not behind the shooting. Regardless, Detective Shiguchi warns Akiyama to stay away from Kanemura Enterprise and Ueno Seiwa clan because while he was in custody, Kanemura was murdered in his office. Akiyama returns to the Sky Finance office, where he is visited by a new client, a mysterious woman going by the name Lily. Lily is in search of a loan of 100 million yen. Despite being surprised by the high loan, Akiyama agrees to loan her the money at no interest if she can pass the test. He tells her to return the next day for the test. Afterwards, Akiyama meets with Kido, who has just been interviewed by Suguchi about Kanemura's death, since he's the one who found the body. As it seems, the police suspect the murderer is a woman, since Kanemura was found half-naked and with a lipstick stain on his neck. Kido also mentions that Arai has gone into hiding since killing Ihara, and he's not been able to locate him. The deer are interrupted by goons from Shibata family, who also seek Arai and suspect they too know his whereabouts. Akiyama lets Kido flee, while he stays behind to fight Shibata men. He easily defeats them, but is then confronted by police officers arriving on the scene of the brawl, forcing him to flee. Akiyama receives a visit from Detective Seguchi in his office. The policeman informs him about the trouble brewing within the dojo, at the dojo clan headquarters. Sixth Chairman Daigo Dojima meets with the captain of Ueno Seiwa clan, Kasuraji, and offers a large pile of money to compensate for the murder of Ihara. Additionally, the patriarch of Shibata family and Arai's boss, Kazuo Shibata, presents Kasuraji with his severed pinky in atonement for his subordinate's crime. However, Kasuraji informs Daigo that this will be insufficient as an apology, and in order to compensate for Ihara's killing, the Ueno Seiwa will only accept Arai's head or the holdings of a dojo clan member of equal rank to Ihara, Goro Majima. Since Majima's holdings include incredibly valuable Kamurocho Hills project, Daigo refuses, which makes the war between the two clans inevitable. Soon after, Lily arrives for her test. Akiyama takes her to the hostess club he owns, Alice, and informs her that in order to qualify for the loan, she must work at the club for three days and earn at least 3 million yen in sales. Though the challenge is daunting, Lily is determined to pass. Then Akiyama takes her for a night out on the town, which ends with they two sharing their former lives in Tokyo. The next day, Akiyama is sent to collect money from a debtor in a champion district, where he sports drama queen, a bar which Lily claimed to work at, and from which she had a lighter when they met the first time. However, when Akiyama goes inside to speak to the owner, he finds him dead in his office, having been killed a couple of days prior. Moreover, the man was a member of the Shibata family. When he returns to Sky Finance, Akiyama finds Hana lying unconscious on the floor and office in disarray. After he wakes her, 
Hana explained that thugs from the Hatsushiba clan broke into the office to steal their debtor ledger and also kidnapped Akito. After calling Hana an ambulance, Akiyama sets her to the street and managed to find Hatsushiba clan's office in a theater square underground. He raids their office and confronts Hatsushiba in his headquarters. After a fight against Hatsushiba's captain, Midori Kawa, Akiyama recovers his ledger and frees Kido. After being questioned, Hatsushiba reveals that his boss, Kazuo Shibata, ordered him to steal the ledger since he's trying to track down Lily. The next night, after Lily has passed her test by earning at least the 3 million on her last day, Akiyama calls her to meet him atop Millennium Tower to collect her loan. At the meeting, he offers Lily the chance to not pay back the money if she tells him why she's been killing officers of the Shibata family. Lily denies it at first, and then says he can't answer and departs, promising to pay back the money in full. Akiyama is soon called over to Alice again, where some Yakuza are making trouble. The rowdy Yakuza are members of the Majima family, led by its drunken lieutenant, Minami, and they are looking for Lily. After Akiyama refuses to give up info on Lily, he has a fight with Minami, which he wins. The thugs are then joined by their patriarch himself, Goro Majima, who tells Minami to stand down. Majima tells Akiyama that he needs to find Lily to protect her, to make up for how he failed her 25 years prior, back when he knew her by her real name, Yasuko Saijima. In 1985, Taiga Saijima is a 21-year-old enforcer for the Sasai family, living in Kamurocho with his younger sister, Yasuko. He and his old brother, Goro Majima, are tasked by the Dojo clan's leadership with assassinating Yoshiharu Ueno, the chairman of the Ueno Seiwa clan, which has recently been encroaching on Dojo clan turf. On the day of the assassination, Majima fails to show up, so Saijima carries out hit by himself, bursting into the ramen shop and kills 18 Ueno's men. But unfortunately, he fails to kill Ueno himself and his officer, Katsulaji. For this crime, he is sentenced to death. In 2010, Saijima has spent 25 years awaiting his execution when he is suddenly transferred to the Okinawa Penitentiary No. 2. Upon arrival, he gets into a fight with some inmates who used to be the part of Ueno Seiwa clan. As a result, he is taken to solitary confinement and is severely beaten by the prison's guard captain Saito. However, he is saved by Go Hamasaki, who was sent to this prison after stabbing Kazuma Kiru a year prior and who bribes the warden to spare Saijima's life. Hamasaki approaches Saijima and requests his help for a prison break. Saijima initially refuses, but changes his mind when Hamasaki informs him that the Sasai family has disbanded after his hit and his patriarch Hideki Sasai mysteriously disappeared soon after. Saijima decides to join in on escape in order to find his old boss and to discover why his old brother Majima failed to appear on the day of the hit. During the breakout, Hamasaki sneaks into the warden's office to search for incriminating evidence he needs to bargain for having their sentences commuted once they are on the outside, while Saijima fights several guards to cause a distraction and buy him time. Eventually, both men make it to the prison courtyard and use a grappling hook to climb over the wall, but they are confronted by Saito and several guards. Saijima allows Hamasaki to climb first while he holds off the guards, greatly impressing his co-conspirator. After beating Saito, Saijima climbs over the wall with Hamasaki's help. However, while Saijima starts his descent to the outside, Saito reawakens and shoots Hamasaki in the chest. A wounded Hamasaki tells Saijima to seek out Kazuma Kiru once he's made it to the Okinawa mainland, and then tackles Saito into the water below. The next morning, Saijima washes up on Morning Glory Beach, where he is found unconscious by Haruka. He is taken into the orphanage Kiru runs and eventually awakens. Surprised by his luck in having ended up right outside Kiru's doorstep, he pleads for Kiru's help in traveling to Tokyo in order to avenge his former boss. Kiru refuses to aid this revenge mission, but Saijima refuses to stand down either, resulting in both of them briefly fight each other before being stopped by Haruka. The strain of the fight causes Saijima to pass out again. He awakens several hours later with a message from Kiru, who provides him money and a new set of clothes. After bidding goodbye to Haruka and thanking her for saving him, Saijima departs.
After arriving in Tokyo, Saejima starts searching for leads on the whereabouts of his old boss. He stumbles onto Kido, fighting off goons from the Shibata family. Upon realizing that Kido is an enemy of Shibata, who was once Sasai's biggest rival, Saejima introduces himself and asks for his help. As Saejima is a legend amongst the Dojo clan's members, Kido lets him stay at his hideout and also tells him about the existence of a mysterious information broker who could help him, known as the Florist. Saejima investigates the florist, and is eventually directed to his base of operations, Purgatory, an underground pleasure district. Florist agrees to provide information on Sasai's whereabouts, but only if Saejima wins a death match at his underground coliseum. Saejima takes part in a match, fighting against the former champion and eventually defeats him. However, when he is given a sword to finish off his rival, Saejima can't bring himself to kill again. He furiously scolds the audience for enjoying murder for sport, and recounts his trauma after having killed so many men, before departing in anger. Liking Saejima's attitude towards life, Florist takes Saejima to his office, where he finally reunites with his old boss. After the 1985 hit, the Ueno Seiwa clan ordered Sasai's death, so he had to go into hiding and eventually wound up homeless after his family was disbanded. The hard life on the street, combined with his heavy drinking, left him unresponsive. When he returns to his hideout, Saejima is confronted by Minami, who tells him that he has a message from his boss. Having learned that Saejima is back in town, Majima wants to see him at his office in Millennium Tower the next night. Saejima travels to Millennium Tower, where he meets his old old brother. Majima takes Saejima to their old favorite hideout, the Yoshida Betting Center where Seijima demands an explanation for why Majima failed to appear for the hit 25 years prior. Majima challenges Seijima to a fight, saying that he will tell him the truth if he beats him. The two old brothers engage in a prolonged battle, which ultimates with Seijima victorious. After regaining his composure, Majima tells Seijima what happened all those years ago. On the day of the hit, he was called to a meeting with Kazuo Shibata, who claimed that the hit Majima and Saejima were about to carry out was against the interest of his boss, Sohei Dojima, so Majima shouldn't be involved. Furthermore, Shibata maliciously claimed that hit is a setup arranged by Sasai in collaboration with a traitor in Ueno Seiwa, so that he can expand his territory after the war between the two clans is triggered. When Majima insists that he couldn't let his old brother carry out the hit alone and try to leave, Shibata had him restrained, and as punishment for defying orders, had one of his eyes gouged out. Young detective Masayoshi Tanimura of the Tokyo Police Community Safety Division is looking for a woman named Yasuko Saejima. One day, he receives a call that this woman had been spotted at a Kamurocho nail salon. Tanimura quickly travels there and finds Yasuko, but the two are attacked by Shibata family members, and while Tanimura tries to fend them off, they manage to escape with a kidnapped Yasuko. Tanimura follows the Shibata goons to their family's base in the Tokyo docks, and engaged in a drawn-out battle with dozens of Shibata's men before he finally makes it to the Shibata's office. There, Patriarch Shibata is in a meeting with none other than Arai, when his men deliver a tied-up Yasuko. As it turns out, the murder of Ihara had been arranged by Shibata and Katsuloji of the Ueno Seiwa clan as part of a conspiracy to try to force the Dojo clan's leadership into giving Ueno Seiwa a stake in the Kamurocho Hills project which Arai had been complicit in. When Shibata tries to rape Yasuko, Arai suddenly shoots him, claiming that Katsuloji's plan no longer needs him, and Katsuloji wants him dead, since he has spent years demanding favors from Katsuloji to keep quiet regarding the truth about Ueno hit. Tanimura burst in and tried to arrest Arai, but the Yakuza managed to get away. The detective questions Shibata about the truth of the Ueno hit, but Shibata dies before being able to answer. Tanimura takes Yasuko to his hideout, where he tells her why he's been looking for her. In 1985, Tanimura's father had been a police detective in charge of investigating Ueno hit when he was suddenly murdered, and the last entry in his logbook said that he was going to meet Yasuko. He questioned about her meeting with his father, but Yasuko reveals that Tanimura Sr. never showed for the meeting, and instead sent her a message telling her to leave Tokyo because the conspiracy surrounding Ueno hit was bigger just than a Yakuza squabble. Yasuko also reveals that Captain Katsuloji of the Ueno Seiwa clan got in contact with her and told her that he could prove her brother's innocence, but in exchange, she had to either pay him a hundred million yen or kill a man for him. Since she didn't have money, she opted to carry out the murder, 
only to have Katsulaji demand more and more killings in exchange for the proof. Eventually, she decided to get money instead, so she took out a loan from Sky Finance. After giving Tanimura the money, Yasuko departs for Okinawa for seeing his brother again before he is executed. Tanimura arranges a meeting with Katsulaji the next day. Katsulaji informs Tanimura that he and Shibata had arranged for Saijima to attack Ueno and his officers, so that all of Katsulaji's rivals would be killed, but himself and Ueno would survive, thus giving his career a huge boost. However, he insists that he was not responsible for the murder of Tanimura's father. He also insists that Seijima was not the one who killed those 18 men, but rather he was. Then Tanimura is surrounded by Ueno Seiwa thugs, as Katsulaji wants to kill him. Luckily, he is saved by the unexpected arrival of Detective Seguchi. Returning to his hideout, Tanimura finds his boss, Chief Hisai, waiting for him as Seguchi told him to go there. Tanimura relays everything Katsulaji told him to his superior officer and requests his help in gaining access to the original case files from the 1985 shooting, which are kept in the classified archive of the Tokyo PD's headquarters. Much to his surprise, Tanimura learns from the file that his father's partner in the investigation was Shiguchi, something he had never mentioned. Tanimura then returns Yasuko's money back to Sky Finance, where he's surprised to see that Akiyama is the owner, since he'd already met him at the scene of Ihara's murder. Tanimura explains all his findings to Akiyama, who in turn informs him that his friend Kido had just got leave that could help him. Mishima, Yuhara's buddy, who was with him at the club when a fight with Arai happened, has been hiding at the Tokyo docks. Tanimura travels there and meets with Mishima in a warehouse. Mishima claims that Katsulaji instructed him and Ihara to go cause trouble for the Shibata family on the night of Ihara's murder, and he has also since ordered his goons to kill Mishima. The conversation is interrupted when Mishima is shot dead by Detective Suguchi, who reveals himself to be Katsulaji's mole within the Tokyo PD. Multiple police officers led by Chief Sudo burst into the warehouse, since Tanimura has warned them beforehand, and Seguchi rushes outside. Tanimura chases Seguchi down, and the two get into a violent fist fight after Seguchi confesses that he was the murderer of Tanimura's father. After being defeated, Seguchi reveals the truth about Ueno hit in 1985. When Saijima carried out the hit, he only knocked out all the victims, without knowing that his guns were loaded with rubber bullets whose impact is no out a person without killing him. After he left, Katsulaji then executed all the victims, eliminating all his rivals, while guaranteeing his and Ueno's survival. The plan also required Seguchi to file a false police report to cover up the rubber bullets, but this was discovered by Seguchi's superior, Seishino Munakata, who then threatened to expose the conspiracy to blackmail him and Katsulaji. He also ordered Seguchi to murder anyone who knew the truth, including Tanimura's father. Before Tanimura can arrest him, Seguchi is shot dead by a police assassin. A few days after Saijima visited Kiru's orphanage, Hamasaki unexpectedly arrives there as well, having survived his injuries during the prison break. Despite Haruka's objections, Kiru invites Hamasaki to stay and listen to what he has to say. Whereupon, Hamasaki shows Kiru the records he stole from the prison to use as leverage. As it turns out, the ledger demonstrates that Commissioner Munakata of Tokyo PD been embezzled money to build privately owned Okinawa prison with the intent of using it as a place to hold any Yakuza in order to take control of the Dojo clan. Hamasaki asks Kiru to go with him to Kamurocho to help stop this plot, but Kiru initially refuses. The next day, Kiru and Hamasaki go to downtown. They overhear Yasuko Saijima asking some police officers about Okinawa Penitentiary No. 2 and about her brother. The two men offer to help Yasuko and take her to an abandoned building. However, they are interrupted by the sudden arrival of Guard Captain Saito and a platoon of other guards from the prison, who have been sent to recapture Hamasaki. Kiryu and Hamasaki fight their way past, and when the fight is over, Kiryu agrees to take Yasuko and Leisure to Kamurocho to help her find her brother and expose the police conspiracy. After Kiryu and Yasuko leave, Hamasaki collapses and dies, since his bullet wounds reopened during the fight. Kiryu and Yasuko arrive in Kamurocho and head to New Serena Bar where they meet with his old friend, Date. Then Kiryu heads out to investigate alone. His first target is Majima, as he hears that he's been reunited with Saijima. But when he arrives at his office, he sees that Majima is being arrested because of a deal that Daigo made while he refused to participate in. As the Dojo clan headquarters, Daigo is having a meeting with Munakata, 
who insists that Dojo clan has gotten too large and too public in its activities, so the police need to take direct control of it in order to maintain social order. Munakata also demands that Arai, who it turns out had been a police infiltrator the entire time, be made into a clan captain, so he can serve as the police representative within the dojo. Reluctantly, Daigo agrees. Kido returns to New Serena, but finds Date unconscious and Yasuko gone. He goes out into the streets to search for Yasuko, and eventually spots her heading into the sewers with Akiyama and Tanimura. In the sewers, Tanimura gives Yasuko his gun for protection, and tells her to go ahead while they hold off their pursuer. When Kido catches up with Akiyama and Tanimura, they mistake him for Matsuraju's gun. They try to stop Kido, but he easily beats both of them before heading to Purgatory. When he arrives, he finds the place trashed, and the florist heavily injured. He tells Kido that Katsuraji and Ueno Sei were attacked, and took over the Kamurocho Hills construction site, and then raided the Purgatory, taking Saejima as a hostage. When Yasuko arrived seeking her brother, they captured her as well. Florist also reveals that Kido has betrayed both Akiyama and Saejima by joining forces with Katsuraji. Back at the new Serena bar, a distraught Akiyama tells the others that he has a secret boat in Sky Finance, which contains 100 billion yen. It's accidentally discovered by Kido, and Katsuraji helped him steal his entire cash reserve. Kido comes up with a plan to recover the money and save my siblings. He calls Katsuraji and tells him about the ledger stolen by Hamasaki, which contains evidence of Munakata's crimes. Since Katsuraji is desperate to get rid of Munakata, he agrees to meet with Kido in Kamurocho Hills construction lot and exchange the ledger for the sage my siblings and the money. Kido travels to the Kamurocho Hills site and finds that Katsuraji has sent all the members of Ueno Seiwa clan to block his path. Undeterred, he proceeds to fight his way up the building. At the building summit, he meets with Katsuraji and Kido, who have brought money and both Taiga and Yasuko. Kido hands over the file to Kido in exchange for Yasuko, but after untying and handing her over, Kido draws a gun. Katsuraji orders Kido to kill them, but the young Yakuza turns the gun on Katsuraji and shoots him instead. Arai makes his presence known, having conspired with Kido to betray Katsuraji and retrieve the file to give to Munakata. However, once Arai has the file, he shoots Kido as well. Then Taiga leaps toward Katsuraji and puts his coat open, revealing he was wearing a bulletproof vest. Katsuraji draws a gun and admits that he was hoping to fake his death and then escape with the money but now he must kill all of them. He shoots at Taiga, but Yasuko dives in front of him and takes the bullet in his stead. She draws Tanimura's gun from her coat and shoots Katsuraji in the head, killing him. Then she dies in Taiga's arms. At the Tokyo police headquarters, Munakata congratulates Arai for recovering to incriminating files, but berates him for letting Kido keep the money. He then hands the detective a gun and pictures of Kido's children, telling him to go to Okinawa and kidnap them in order to force Kido to hand over the money. Disgusted by Munakata's ruthlessness, Arai takes the gun and shoots the commissioner before fleeing. A few days later, Kido, Akiyama, Saejima, and Tanimura gather at New Serena to come up with a plan to deal with the enemies. They decide to take Akiyama's money to the top of Millennium Tower and inform both the police command and the dojo clan in order to lure their foes within both into a trap. The next night, Daigo, Arai show up atop Millennium Tower. Kido is also there, who has survived and whose real identity is Daigo's spy the whole time. The three are surprised by the arrival of SWOT team led by Munakata, who has also survived Arai's shot since the gun was also loaded with rubber bullets. At the very moment, a helicopter descends from the air, scattering the money off the roof. Kiru, Akiyama, Saejima, and Tanimura get off and confront their respected rivals for a final showdown. Daigo, Arai, and Kido are all defeated, as well as Munakata and his ward team. The commissioner commits suicide after learning that he will not escape his crime sentences.